For city dwellers, green areas such as this one here in Los Angeles can offer respite from loud noises in an urban soundscape. And with our cities getting louder and louder, it's more important now than ever to find ways to muffle this unseen menace. The Din of Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh, where a staccato of honking and the crescendo of car engines make it the noisiest city in the world, according to UN experts. Traffic sound levels here reach up to 119 decibels, short of the threshold of pain, but enough to put hearing at risk. When we are managing our traffic or signals, people become impatient and they are continuously pressing the horns and creating noise pollution. And we are getting too much affected by this noise pollution and uh, we are suffering from hearing loss as well. I think the natural inclination to just like pollute stuff is because people don't believe in this idea of interconnectedness and they see that their behavior is independent of what happens elsewhere. We see that kind of mentality being pervasive. In an urban environment, Road traffic, aviation, and construction sounds all accumulate in a cacophony of noise pollution, and prolonged exposure to the noise is a proven detriment to human health and well-being. According to a 2022 report from the UN, the soundscapes in cities like London, New York, Ho Chi Minh City, and Dhaka are far exceeding the recommended limit of 70 decibels. In Singapore, Gan Wung Sung is focused on developing technology that can mitigate urban noise. He's a professor of audio engineering at Nanyang Technological University. Noise or urban noise is the second largest environmental cause of health problem, only after air pollution. So it's very important that we find ways to reduce the urban noise. And you've called noise an underestimated threat. What do you mean by that? Yes. Uh, because noise can lead to several uh, short-term sleep disturbance or annoyance and also the long-term consequence like hypertension, uh, heart diseases and even hearing loss. At this student dorm room, Gan and his team have set up a so-called anti-noise window which works on a principle of physics called destructive interference. So we basically install a microphone out there to pick up the noise that's coming into the windows and the four speakers that you see around the frame of the windows is to generate the anti-noise signal. Gan says that like noise cancelling headphones, his system emits sound waves of the same frequency but opposite pressure patterns to the offending noise to cancel it out. It's something like uh, coming from a handbook of martial arts where if you want to match an opponent's internal strength you need to also to counter his stroke with opposite strokes so that it cancels out each other's. Well, there's a lot going into this technology in order to, to mitigate or to mute noise. And you've said that this device can cut noise by up to 50%, is that right? The 50% is the perceived loudness. Actually, in terms of the sound meters, what we are targeting is a 10 decibel of reduction. So perceptually, we will feel that the noise level has reduced by 50%. Right now, we are playing a uh, train noise, as you can hear. And this is without the noise control turned on. And if you look at the meter, it's a range of around 70 decibel. When the active noise control is turned on, you can see a substantial 10 decibel reduction in terms of noise level. Gan says the biggest challenge to developing this technology is handling intruding noises coming from different directions, as well as computing and reacting to those noises quickly enough. There are so many different types of noise, which is not possible for us to cancel all noise at the same time. So we have to focus on cancelling the low frequency noise that's coming from the train, the traffic or some machineries. At NTU's Yunnan Garden, Gan and his team are working on another project aimed at reducing noise pollution. What you're seeing now is a trial. We are augmenting sounds into the urban environment. So the selection of sounds now is based on um, artificial intelligence model. We choose the most pleasant sound for the given environment. We are using this technique called attentional masking. We play out positive natural sound, bird songs, water sound and also wind sound, so that we can form these, what we call, acoustic perfumes. 
Gan says he hopes to see his noise reduction technology one day deployed in Singapore's high-rise residential and commercial buildings. It's like a two-prone approach. One is you mitigating the negative noise, and another one is enhancing the positive sound. So we can come to a balance. It's a balance that Mora Bajaj says he is hopeful can be restored so long as humans take action. Everything that I've seen in my uh, career as a scientist and engineer tells me that nature is resilient uh, in ways that are, you know, we can't even predict. And it's like whenever humans stop doing weird stuff, nature says, I'm going to find a way to thrive.